the first element which the reform was about to bring is to bring a more comprehensive data protection rules. What we had before, we had de facto 28, because we have 28 member states, 28 different data protection rules. Now, it will change. It will be one law, and it will be law which comprehensively covers all areas, namely also law enforcement area. And here I'm referring to the police directive, because the reform consists of two elements, the regulation and the police directive. Nowadays, we have applicable in the European Union two, still two different legal instruments, Directive 95 and uh, Framework Decision. But the scope of the application of the Framework Decision is much more restrictive. So now with the reform, we cover comprehensively all the areas where data is being um, processed. Um, this will allow also in such a such a times of insecurities from the criminal enforcement point of view, more cooperation among our law enforcement authorities throughout the EU when they are exchanging data. So this police directive and the reform is coming also at the point in time when this comprehensive coverage of all areas when data is uh, being processed is very much needed. I just mentioned that uh, uh, the general data protection regulation is, uh, is a directly applicable act and that we will not have the 28 uh, uh, implementing or transposing national laws anymore. And by this I'm coming to the second element I wanted to mention, the second change the reform is bringing. So not only not fragmentation, comprehensive coverage, but also the second element, harmonization and simplification. So no 28 by one directly applicable um, law. And within this harmonization and simplification, there are three elements we should bear in mind. First of all, the regulation provides not only for a one set of rules, but also the, the regulation provides for mechanism which will assure uniform application of these rules. And here I'm, I'm referring to the consistency mechanisms and the so-called one-stop shop, which was discussed so extensively um, last year. What does it mean, consistency mechanism? It means cooperation between data protection authorities. And it starts with a mutual assistance between European data protection authorities, where, um, just for you to know, the possibilities to not to respond to mutual assistance requests are fairly restricted. So there is an obligation of cooperation, I would even say. Yeah? And when one DPA addresses another one, this this DPA from which the assistance is being requested can reject this request only under two, uh, under two circumstances, when it's not competent to do what it's being asked to, or when the request is itself against the regulation. So a very far-reaching injection of a, of a, a need of cooperation uh, between the DPAs, and the one-stop shop, also assuring uniform uh, and harmonized application of the data protection rules throughout Europe, uh, which provides for an updated form of what we call now Article 29 Working Party, Party which is a bottom line, a cooperation forum between all the data protection authorities we have in Europe. But this board will have um, uh, will have the power to adopt legally binding decisions in the situations when in cross-border cases DPAs will not be able to reach a consensus. Yeah? So again, we have uh, another element, not only cooperation, but also if the cooperation doesn't work, a legally binding decision giving one interpretation of the data protection rules uh, stemming from the regulation in the European Union. <coughs> 